Alexei Nikolaevich was the only son of the last Russian emperor, Nicholas II and his wife, the Empress Consort Alexandra. As the only son of the emperor, Alexei was the Tsarevich, or crown prince and heir to the throne of Russia. Following the murder of the Russian imperial family, the house of Romanov at the hands of a firing squad in the basement of Ipitiv's house in Ekaterinburg on the 17th of July 1918, it is believed that there were at least 81 impostors who posed as the Tsarevich Alexei. However, all of them would eventually be exposed as impostors, as the skeletal remains of the imperial family were recovered and identified through DNA testing in the 1990s and 2000s. Alexei was widely known to have suffered from hemophilia, an inherited genetic disorder that impairs the body's ability to make blood clots, a process needed to stop bleeding. Alexei's mother Alexandra was a carrier of this disease, inheriting it from her grandmother, Queen Victoria. Alexei's illness was known to have been severe. Even the most insignificant bruises caused internal bleeding and on one occasion a bleeding nose once almost put the Tsarevich into his grave. Because of his illness, Alexei's joints ached, and at times, he couldn't walk by himself, and as a result, an officer was assigned to Alexei who carried him around and rode with him. Alexei attracted a great deal of attention from impostors for a wide variety of reasons. At the age of just 13 at the time of his murder, Alexei, like the two youngest of his four sisters, the Grand Duchesses Maria and Anastasia, was still a teenager when he died providing potential impostors with an excuse for any dissimilarities between themselves and their legitimate Romanov targets because of the supposed changes in physical appearance between adolescence and adulthood. In the first of our videos exploring the lives and motivations of the numerous impostors who claim to be the Tsarevich Alexei, we turn our attention to Canada and the story of a journalist turned ballroom dancer who continues to attract attention to this day, 46 years after his own death, for his claim of being the murdered Tsarevich. This is the story of Heino Tamit. Heino Tamit, also known as Alexei Tamit Romanov, was born in Java County, Estonia under the name of Ernest Veerman to parents named Johan and Paula Veerman on March 24, 1905. For the first 32 years of his life, Tamit used the name of his birth, Ernest Veerman. However, by 1937 Veerman had adopted the pseudonym Heino Tamit while working as a journalist for an Estonian newspaper. In his profession as a journalist, Tamit was well-traveled, however, in the aftermath of the Nazi occupation of Estonia in 1941, his job as a journalist came to an end and he earned his living by drawing and selling postcards. Soon enough, he discovered a new source of income by drawing and selling portraits of Hitler to the German rear units. It is around this time that Tamit married for the first time, to a Finnish woman, which provided him with a means of legally emigrating from Estonia. After receiving permission to leave Estonia, Tamit boarded an overcrowded ship full of refugees which departed for Finland in early 1944 under the escort of Allied aircraft. However, Tamit would not remain long in Finland, as he quickly relocated to Sweden that same year. While residing in Sweden, 
Hamid divorced his first wife and later remarried. From this second marriage, two children were born. However, neither his second wife nor his children knew about his claim to be the Cesarevich Alexei during this time. With his second family, Tamid relocated to Toronto, Canada, in 1952. After emigrating to Canada, Tamid moved once again, this time to the city of White Rock, situated in the Metro Vancouver Regional District in British Columbia. While residing in White Rock, Tamit opened a small ballroom dance studio and met his future third wife, Sandra, in July 1956. In 1970, the couple would marry, and this third marriage would be Tamit's last, as the couple lived happily together until his death on June 26, 1977. Unlike many other Romanov impostors, Tamit would make his claim later in life, declaring himself to be the Cesarevich Alexei for the first time while in his 60s. According to his third wife Sandra, the couple had been dancing a foxtrot to music from the 1956 Ingrid Bergman film Anastasia when she noticed he had tears in his eyes. When she asked him why, Tamit replied that he once had a sister called Anastasia. Once again, Sandra asked who her husband was. Tamit would point her to a book written by Prince Felix Yusupov, which was titled Lost Splendor. After looking at the library, Sandra would find a copy of the book. I wasn't looking for the Tsar of Russia, she said. I was looking for another little boy. I am Alexei, he told her. In 1972, Tamit also revealed his secret to his youngest son, then aged 26. Tamit would tell his third wife stories about the Tsarish times, and she was amazed at his attention to detail. However, it would not take long for Tamit's pretensions to land him in trouble. When the Duke of Windsor, the former King Edward VIII, had died on May 28, 1972, Tamit sent a letter of condolence to the Queen, Elizabeth II, signing it as Alexei, complete with his royal title. Shortly after, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police visited him at his home. During this visit, Tamit was interrogated, and he showed the Mounted Police who were present a scar he said came from the butt of a rifle during the murder of the Russian imperial family in Ekaterinburg. Tamit also claimed that he was left deaf in one ear as the result of a gunshot at close range fired by Yakov Yurovsky himself. Following this, an officer of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police issued Tamit with a mild warning to cease and desist and not attract attention to himself. However, the Queen would not be the only individual to receive a letter from this bogus Cesarevich, as Tamit also sent a letter to the UK Prime Minister, Edward Heath, requesting that he help stop dishonest individuals from claiming what he described as his family's good name. This may have been partially motivated by the fear that fellow imposter Michael Golanewski, whom we touched upon in our Eugenia Smith video, would instead be declared Alexei. Despite receiving a warning to cease and desist from the police, Tamit's third wife Sandra claimed that he received an official telegram in response to a letter of congratulations which he had sent the following year after the wedding of Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips. This telegram was supposedly addressed to Alexei Nikolaevich Tsarevich, Grand Duke of Russia. However, telegram or not, Tamit's claims to be the Tsarevich Alexei persisted more quietly while his health gradually declined. During this time, Tamit announced to his wife that it was too late for him to assert his rights and shifted this responsibility to her and the children. Heino Tamit, or Ernest Veerman, died of a form of leukemia in the year 1977. Along with his wife, 
Tammet's claims would also be championed by a Vancouver journalist by the name of John Kendrick. In an attempt to explain why Alexei was a hemophiliac and Heino Tammet was not, Kendrick maintained that the Cesarevich's disease was misdiagnosed, and that Tammet had a disease that might conceivably cause similar symptoms. An article written by Kendrick and published in the American Journal of Hematology provided a full exposition of Kendrick's hypothesis, though without any disclosure of its relationship to the Heino Tammet case. As well as this, Tammet's wife provided scientists with tooth samples for DNA testing, but the tests were never done, and the specimen was never returned, with claims that it had, conveniently enough, disappeared in mysterious circumstances. The story of Heino Tammet's or Alexei's survival was supposedly the result of a secret conspiracy between the Moscow government and the German authorities and may have been included as a secret clause of the 1917 Brest Peace Treaty that was not included in official papers. Supposedly, Alexei represented an invaluable hostage in a time where the outcome of the Russian Revolution still appeared vague. An official inquiry revealed that each member of the firing squad had his own target in Ekaterinburg, and Yurovsky had reserved Alexei for himself. According to Kendrick, Yurovsky loaded his own gun with blank cartridges in order to only leave Alexei with concussion following the shooting. In the aftermath of the killings, a quick-witted Alexei pretended to be dead and escaped only with deafness in one ear and a slight concussion. Then, when the bodies were taken to the burial site, and the truck got stuck in the mud, Yurovsky stopped an Estonian farmer by the name of Johan Veerman who was passing by and ordered two or three bundles to be loaded onto his cart. Having determined that there was a living boy in one of them, Veerman decided to save him. However, Veerman himself was also apparently part of the conspiracy since his son who was about the same age had recently died of typhus. Tammet's third wife claimed that he remembered nothing until he awoke in the home of the Veerman family in the aftermath of the killings in Ekaterinburg. The crown prince thus inherited the name of the deceased, Ernest Veerman, and remained to live in a hospitable family. Kendrick also insists that Paula, the wife of the farmer, was a distant relative of Count Benkendorf, who was the chief marshal of the Tsar's imperial court, and thus let her remotely communicate with the royal family. As of 2023, Tamit's widow, Sandra Tamit Romanov, continues to argue passionately for recognition of her late husband's claim 46 years after his death. Interestingly enough, Tamit had claimed to have seen fellow imposter Anna Anderson, who had famously masqueraded as Grand Duchess Anastasia during the Hamburg trial, and claimed that he was convinced that she had nothing to do with Anastasia. However, as the skeletal remains of the imperial family were recovered and identified through DNA testing in the 1990s and 2000s, establishing beyond reasonable doubt that the entire family were massacred in Ekaterinburg in 1918, Tammet himself would be proven to have been as fraudulent as the famous Anastasia imposter he would publicly denounce. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy the content we produce here at Heart for History, please like and subscribe. And please feel free to leave a comment, as your feedback is greatly appreciated. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon.